this morning we have access into the deep things of God by the Holy Spirit. Our eyes of understanding flooded with light. Clarity comes by the teaching of your word. Your people equipped, edified, Jesus glorified. Nobody lives here the same way they came. We give you praise for answered prayer. And we rejoice in faith right now in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Well, I want to welcome everybody connected to the service this morning by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, and all our campuses connected around the world. We're glad to have everybody. Get ready. The word is going to build you up and you will never be the same again. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. Are we excited to be in church this morning to receive the word? Can we celebrate our fellowship in the word this morning? Amen. Glory to God. Let's just celebrate, 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 celebrate. Hallelujah. Somebody shout a powerful amen. amen. You can be seated with your sweet smart self this morning. What a day to be alive. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Uh, it's just exciting. In the course of the week, I was preaching for my father's church. Not my father's, you know, I mean my father's denomination. The, the church where I grew up in. I was honored to be to preach for them in Abba, and uh, a lot of old memories. They were singing all the songs I used to know in those days that I have not had in many years. It was beautiful. I had a good time teaching the word. All right, are you ready for the word this morning? We're dealing with the in Christ realities, the revelation of Brother Paul's identification, and we took time on on Wednesday to look at that identification as it began from the ministry of Jesus Christ. And we began to see what Jesus began to do in the book of John. And those of you that were here on Wednesday, it was quite an insightful study. I will encourage you to get the material for Wednesday and listen to it. It's very critical. It will help you a great deal. All right, the book of Acts chapter 26 as we continue. Acts chapter 26. We began to read Acts chapter 26. Let me read from verse 18. Acts 26 verse number 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. And inheritance. And I told you that an inheritance is actually. That is inheritance. The forgiveness of sins. That is inheritance among them which are sanctified, take note, by faith that is in me. By faith, if the Bible was mine, I will underline that place. By faith that is in me. Very instructive. Now, so we took time to look at the fact that, um, you know, no amount of being with Jesus physically can take the place of revelation knowledge. We took time to see that the fact that they were with Jesus physically was not an advantage to them to know Jesus more than us. That's why brother Paul came from the backside without ever meeting Jesus physically and taught things that those that were with Jesus didn't even know. Because revelation knowledge is very critical in the study of scripture. Now, where is that revelation? We're dealing with the revelation of brother Paul. Where is that revelation? Again, look at Galatians chapter 1 verse 16. Galatians Chapter 1, verse 16. <clears throat> to reveal his son in me. To reveal his son in me. Where is that revelation? To reveal his son in me. That I might preach him among the hidden. Immediately I confront not with flesh and blood. This is brother Paul talking about the, you know, how he came by revelation knowledge. So the revelation of brother Paul is in the scriptures is in the scriptures. And that revelation of the scriptures will reveal Christ in the Old Testament. That revelation of the scriptures will reveal Christ in the Old Testament. And that revelation means there must be a fact 
of the resurrection. For it to be revelation, there must be a fact of the resurrection. Because you don't need revelation for the death of Christ. You don't need revelation for the crucifixion. They are a historical facts. All of the crucifixion stories and all of the death, the burial are all historical. But you require revelation for the resurrection. Because the resurrection of Jesus is where you need faith. So what is the fact of the resurrection? Jesus stepped at his physical, I mean Jesus stopped at his physical resurrection. But that was not everything. That was not everything. All right. So brother Paul says to reveal his son in me. That's key. To reveal his son in me. There are three key terms in Brother Paul's revelation. Three key terms in the revelation of Brother Paul. And we will run through these very briefly this morning. Quite some words. Please pay attention. Do you discover that the revelation of the Bible is the revelation of words? The revelation of the Bible is the revelation of words. W-O-R-D-S. Words. Words. We know by words. We know by words. Not by images, not by pictures. We know by words. That's why Paul will say the words which the Holy Ghost teacheth. The words which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Look at it in 1 Corinthians 2.13. The words which the Holy Ghost teacheth, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, which the Holy Ghost teacheth. How does the Holy Ghost teach? He teaches with words. The words which the Holy Ghost teacheth, not pictures, not symbols, not figures. But words, all right? So, the words which the Holy Ghost teacheth. So, the key term in Brother Paul's doctrine will be wisdom. The key term in Brother Paul's doctrine will be wisdom. Look at it in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him has written unto you. According to the wisdom given unto him has written unto you. Please pay attention. That word wisdom is insight. Insight. The word wisdom is the word insight. According to the insight given to brother Paul. The word wisdom is the word insight. Now that word insight will be revelation, apocalypsis. The wisdom is the insight. The insight is the revelation. Apocalypsis. All right? Apocalypsis. According to the wisdom, the insight, the revelation given to him. The four gospels is not revelation. Even though revelation was taught there. But the four gospels is not revelation. Saying that Jesus was crucified is historical fact. So, what will be revelation will be what is in the crucifixion. The crucifixion it is not revelation. Revelation will be what is in the crucifixion. Alright? The ability to uncover what is in the crucifixion. What is contained in the crucifixion. Please pay attention. So, Acting drama with a cross, you are just being a historian. All right? Acting drama with a cross or acting drama and, um, uh, uh, you know, acting that Jesus came out of a tomb. Or you're just being a historian. The best drama can give you is history. You cannot come by revelation watching drama. That's why drama acting is a waste of believer's time. We don't learn by acting. We are not in a make-believe. We learn by words which the Holy Ghost teaches. The Holy Ghost teaches via words, not via acting. Are we in the building here? 
Yeah, via words which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Okay, so it's a fact that Jesus was crucified. It's a historical fact that he was buried. But it is revelation that he rose. It is revelation that he rose. You know, imagine being on the cross. <laughs> imagine being on that cross and saying, I am crucified with Christ. Christ is on the cross. You are on the ground. And you are saying, I am crucified with, cross, with Christ. It makes no sense. That's why it is revelation. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I. But Christ liveth in me. The life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make rational sense to any human being. It takes revelation knowledge to come to acknowledging that you're crucified with Christ. Am I teaching here? It takes revelation knowledge. It's not head knowledge. The natural man can't take that. How can you say you're crucified? See you moving freely. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a spiritual reality. Are we in the building here? Right. That's why it answers to faith. It, that's why it answers to faith. The revelation is the meaning. The meaning of that which is covered. Revelation gives meaning to that which is covered. That is why revelation will be what is in the crucifixion. Meaning of that which is covered. In fact, the more they kept seeing Jesus, I'm talking about the apostles now, the more the word in me didn't make sense. How can you be seeing Jesus and he is saying, uh, I am in you. You are walking with him, you are looking at him, he's looking at you and he is saying, I am in you. And you are also saying, Christ is in me. But he's standing there, you're standing. So that's why such words will not make much meaning to the disciples who were physically there. That's why the more they were with Jesus, the more confused they were. That's why a man like Paul that never saw Jesus, those words made sense to him because that's revelation knowledge. Are you still in the... That's revelation knowledge. A baby in a manger. And the man looks at the baby and says, my eyes have seen. It takes revelation to talk like that. My eyes have seen thy salvation. That means he interpreted the child. He interpreted the child. He called a boy his Lord. He called a baby in a manger my Lord. Are we in the building here? Yeah. A light to lighten the Gentiles. The word to lighten is the word apocalypsis. Is the word revelation. To lighten is the word revelation. To reveal. So you can see the Pauline gospel there in the confession of Simon. Apocalypsis to the Gentiles. Let's see brother Peter in 1 Peter 1.7. 1 Peter 1.7. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise, unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. At the appearing of Jesus Christ. All right? At the appearing of Jesus. Look at verse 13. Look at the way Brother Peter will use that word again in verse 13 of the same chapter. Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, at the appearing of Jesus Christ, 
at the revelation of Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 4 verse 13. First Peter chapter 4 verse number 13. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory shall be revealed. When his glory shall be revealed. You may be glad also with exceeding joy. With exceeding joy. Notice something. Peter, he looked at the full disclosure of Jesus. The full disclosure at the appearing. At the appearing. At the revelation. He's not talking about, you know, revelation knowledge. He's talking about the full disclosure. The full disclosure of Jesus. The parousia of Jesus. At the appearing. At the revelation of Jesus. Are you still here? Now, that is the way Brother Peter looked at that word revelation. He looked at the word revelation more for the rapture. Appearing revelation in Peter's context is the rapture. Or what we call the second coming of Christ. The event that is yet to come. The advent of Christ. All right? Which is what I teach you by revelation as our appearance. When Christ who is our life shall appear, we shall appear with him in glory. The, 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 the second coming or the rapture. Mm -mm. So that is the way brother Peter uses revelation in his book. He uses it for the rapture. But look at Paul. Paul used the word revelation, apocalypse, more than any other person. In Romans chapter 8 verse 19, look at the way brother Paul will talk about this. Romans 8, 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. The revealing of sons, both Jesus and us. Jesus is a son, we are sons. So at our, the, the earnest creature waited for our appearance, our parousia. This manifestation is the second coming or the rapture. This particular manifestation here. Romans 16, 25 now. Look at the way brother Paul will call, call it again. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. According to the revelation he calls the gospel the revelation of the Old Testament. The revelation, the apocalypse of the Musterion, the revelation of the Old Testament is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of the Old Testament is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. So that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 14, 6. He uses that word in revelation gifts. Now brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. He used that word in the revelation of the gifts of the spirit. In same words he using, you can write this down, 1 Corinthians 14, 26. 2 Corinthians 12, 1. Galatians 2, 2. Gifts of the Spirit. But in Galatians 1, 12. Put it up for me. Look at it. Galatians 1, 12. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Look at that. First, I mean Galatians chapter 1 verse 16 now. Revelation of Jesus Christ where? To reveal his son in me. To reveal his son in me. That to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the hidden. To reveal his son in me. Go to Ephesians 1.17. Ephesians 1.17 That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in, if your Bible is mine, I will circle that in, revelation in, 
the knowledge of him in to reveal his son in me. Revelation in the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of him. Are you still in the building? In the knowledge of him. Please stay with me. Ephesians 3, 3. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 3. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. Apocalypto. By apocalypto, where we have the word apocalypsis. It means to bring to light. To bring to light. Something that was there, you now put light on it to open it up. Something that was there, revelation. Something that was there, you now put light on it to open it up. To open it up. To be seen. So, the opposite of revelation will be what? Huh? Mystery. Yes. Mystery. Which Jesus himself used. Jesus used mystery. <laughs> Jesus taught using mystery. Matthew 13, 11. In the parable of the sower. Matthew 13, 11. Mark 4, 11. Luke 8, 10. Matthew 13, 11. Mark 4, 11, Luke 8, 10. Then in Romans eleven twenty five, look at the way brother Paul uses the word revelation. Romans eleven twenty five. For I will not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be coming. Lest you should be ignorant of this mystery. All right? He's talking about the gospel. Romans 16.25. Romans 16.25. Lot of scriptures good for your health. Romans 16.25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret when? Since the world began. So the mystery is the Old Testament which is the opposite of revelation, which is the New Testament. The mystery. All right? Look at 1 Corinthians 2.1. 1 Corinthians 2.1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. The testimony of God. Every time Paul used the word mystery, he was preaching from where? Old Testament. So, Apocalypses in Paul's letters will be talking about explaining the Old Testament. Apocalypses or Revelation in Paul's letters will be talking about explaining the mystery which is the Old Testament. Explaining the mystery which is the Old Testament. Are you still in the building? So, he explains the Old Testament and in explaining the Old Testament, Brother Paul calls it the gospel. The gospel. In his explanation of the Old Testament, he calls it the gospel. You can write this down. Romans 11.25. Romans 16.25. First Corinthians 2.1. 1 Corinthians 2.7. 1 2, even the hidden wisdom, even the hidden wisdom... He calls that revelation hidden wisdom. 1 Corinthians 4.1. Look at the way brother Paul will use that word. 1 Corinthians 4.1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Stewards of the mysteries of God. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So when mysteries are spoken, they require explanation. When mysteries are spoken, they require explanation. So the explanation of mystery 
is called revelation. The explanation of mystery is called revelation. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 51. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. I reveal to you a mystery or I explain to you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. So some of us will sleep. But not all of us will sleep. Are we in the building? Yeah. You know, sometimes when people sleep and Christians get shocked. Why? 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 You're acting like you're not reading your Bible. Or you're acting like you don't really believe your Bible. Ha! How can it happen? There are two ways to go to heaven. One is you sleep. The other one is we shall be changed. And it's already clear that all of us will not sleep. So some of us certainly will sleep. That somebody sleeps or slept doesn't mean the person has done evil. That somebody slept doesn't mean the person is an evil person. Or it doesn't mean that Satan has defeated the person. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And on the resurrection morning, we will look at death and say to death, where is your victory? Where is your victory? You thought you got me, but I'm here. Where is your victory? That's why brother Paul said, wherefore you comfort yourself with these words. You comfort yourself with these words. Remembering that brethren who sleep, sleep in Christ. And you are in Christ. They didn't leave you, they are still with you. It's just that mortality won't allow you to touch them. Except you don't believe the Bible you're reading. And except you don't believe that uh, what we're doing here is serious. Except you think we're just playing here. Then if you think we're playing here, that is when people who sleep should shock you. But if you know we're not playing here, when brethren sleep, it should be more real to you that what we're doing is serious. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. It's serious. Every time I hear that a believer, a brother or a sister has gone to be with the Lord, it just tells my heart, this thing is more real than anybody can think about it. You know, more real. More real. We shall not all sleep. So some of us will sleep. Some of us will sleep. Whatever the reason is, sleep is sleep. <laughs> hey, are you here? Whatever the reason is, sleep is sleep. The people we cry for are people who slept. No, the people we cry for are people who died. <laughs> they are the people we cry for. Because once you die, you are gone forever. We and you will never meet eternally. Once anybody dies without Christ, that's the end. The last time you see that person is the day he was put in the ground. If you were there. Well, when brethren sleep, they are just resting. And there are two reasons why brethren will sleep. Number one, they are tired of being here. And number two, they finish what they are here for. Two reasons. And when they sleep, they await our resurrection. Which is the glorious appearing. Both those that are sleeping and those of us that are alive, all of us will be changed. And we shall be with the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had to say that because it's important to say that here. Now, look at that scripture we just read. First <clears throat> Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. All be changed. That is a change of the physical body where mortality is swallowed by immortality. Ephesians 1 9. Ephesians 1 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had proposed in himself. Wow. Now, Look at it again. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, 
question. This mystery of his will, where do we find it? Huh? Where? No. Where do we find the mystery? In the Old Testament. So the mystery of his... See, listen to me in context. Don't assume you know. You don't know as long as you're not thinking in context. Anything you say out of context is wrong. So when listening, stay with me in the subject matter. Are we in the building here? Stay where? In the subject matter so you can understand. It's contextual. Bible study is contextual study. If I ask a question, don't just answer. Look at what we are doing. Look at the way the terms I use within that context. That helps you to come to a place of epignosis, a place of precision, a place of accurateness. It's important. It's important. That's why sometimes I keep asking the questions. It's just to make sure you are in the context. Just to put you in that context. That's why sometimes I ask the questions. Are we still in the building here? So the mystery of his will is found where? In the Old Testament. Look at Ephesians 3, 3 to 4. <clears throat> Ephesians 3, 3 to 4. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four, a four, a four in few words. Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge where? In the mystery of Christ. My knowledge. In the mystery of Christ. Question. Where is the mystery of Christ? Old Testament. So, because when they were teaching, they didn't have New Testament. So, when the apostles were teaching, they used the Old Testament to teach the revelation we read in the New Testament. So, the Old Testament was their reference material. So, everything you will read in the New Testament was taken out of the Old Testament to teach. Are we in the building here? So that's why the New Testament is the revelation of the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. It's the same book. Just that the New Testament is rightly divided out of the Old Testament. That's why the New Testament is the diet for the believer. Because it has been divided out of the Old Testament. Ototomio has happened in the New Testament. Are we still in the building? Okay, please stay with me. So, question. Who opens the books of the Old Testament? Who opens the books of the Old Testament? Okay, let me read a verse for you. It will help you to answer me that question. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify of me. John 5, 39. Who opens the books of the Old Testament? Christ, because they are written concerning him. So what's the key to understanding the Old Testament? Christ. So what do you look for in the Old Testament? Christ. What's the message of the Old Testament? Christ. What's the revelation of the Old Testament? Christ. So once you have Christ, what happens? To open the Old Testament is easy. The Old Testament is not a historical account of wars. The Old Testament is not a book of history. The Old Testament is not a book of genealogy. The Old Testament is a revelation of Christ concealed. So Christ unlocks the Old Testament. Christ unlocks the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, therefore, is the revelation of the Old Testament. Ephesians 3, 4. Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge where? In the mystery of who? So, whose mystery is the Old Testament? Christ is the mystery of Christ. Look at verse 9. Ephesians 3, 9. Oh, I love verse 9. And to make all men see. To make how many men? See what is the fellowship of the mystery. Which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God. Who created all things by Jesus Christ. So, from the beginning of the world... 
listen carefully. I'm about to say something you need to pay attention to. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. All things. What are all things? Uh, what are all things? No, 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 no. What are all things? In that life and light. All things, you will have stayed in the context. You will have answered me better. Because I quoted the context. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Then you start thinking of moon, stars, trees, and floor. No, that's not what he's talking about there. Then he goes down in context to explain what all things were made. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. So what are the all things that were made by him? Life and light. He's not talking of physical stuff. He's talking about spiritual realities in Christ. He is life and light. So when he says all things were made by him, he wasn't talking of physical matter. He's talking about spiritual realities that are only found in Christ. And these are the only things we have access to as believers that unbelievers don't have access to. Because the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. Neither can he know them. So we compare spiritual with spiritual. So we are spiritual. We receive spiritual things. So whatever comes from Christ to us is spiritual. You know why? Physical things are accessed by everybody. Everybody can access physical things. But spiritual things are only accessed by spiritual men. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. So spiritual people access spiritual things. I'm teaching good this morning. All things were made by him. Life and light from Christ. Life and light. Who? Life and light. Remember, we have things in the spiritual. I dealt with that on Wednesday. We have things in the spiritual. Whatever was made by Christ is eternal. So that's why it's easy for you to explain Adam's sin. Because Adam's sin was not physical. <laughs> Adam's sin was not physical. It was not fornicating or stealing. Who was he fornicating with? Who was he stealing from? Adam's sin was not physical. It becomes easy now when you understand what we're dealing with here to explain the sin of Adam. So the sin of Adam was actually spiritual. The sin of Adam was spiritual. That's why he died spiritually. That's why he had no life. He rejected life and light. He rejected life and light. Remember in the Eden, there was a tree of life. God said, eat it. And there was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, don't eat that. Adam rejected life and went for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the fall of Adam was spiritual. Adam rejected Christ who was life. In Christ, life and light. He rejected that and went for, 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 for unbelief. He didn't trust God and believe in God. That's the fall. That's why to come back to Christ, you believe. Because the fall is unbelief. Salvation is faith in Christ. Are we teaching here? Yes, Salvation is faith in Christ. I've done extensive teaching on that in this house. Salvation is faith in Christ. So, you see God's wisdom from the beginning. God's wisdom from the beginning was life and light. God's wisdom from the beginning was life and light. So look at that Ephesians 3 verse 9 again. It will now make sense. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Verse 10 now. 
to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenlies might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. 11. According to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this eternal purpose is only found in Christ. This eternal purpose is only found in Christ. So all of God's wisdom can only be found in new creation realities, which is in Christ. And somebody say, well, you know, <laughs> people are wonderful. Then, you know, um, I don't really preach new creation realities. I preach the business side of Christianity. Go and sit down, my friend. You don't know what you're talking about. All of God's wisdom is what we call new creation realities. All. All of God's wisdom. So, new creation realities are the realities of God himself. Everything I've been teaching in this church for years now, they are all new creation realities. It's the totality of the realities of God himself. And we found those realities in the man like God. We found those realities in the man like God. That's why we pray the Pauline prayers to be able to see these realities. To see them. If Peter can say that the things brother Paul spoke, they are hard to be understood. If a man like Peter can submit that these things are hard. This is Peter who ate with Jesus, slept with Jesus, walked with Jesus, rebuked Jesus. When Paul spoke, Peter never said what Jesus spoke was hard. No. But when he was looking at the Pauline teaching, Peter submitted that these things are hard. In fact, put it up. 315, Second Peter. Pay attention. 2 Peter 3.15 An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom, insight, revelation, apocalypse is given unto him, hath written unto you. Next verse. As also in all epistles speaking in them of these things. In which are some things hard to be understood. Peter acknowledged that even I, Peter, am still battling with the insight of brother Paul. There are things Paul spoke. They are not impossible to understand, but they are hard. That's why sometimes when you hear me teach these things, your head goes, Arr! because it's like it's too much. It's hard to be understood. Put it up for me. Which some things are hard to be understood. Second Peter 3.16 Which they that are unlearned and unstable the rest. That is the rest with it. As they do also the other scriptures. But look at, look at the downside. It will be unto their own destruction. They wrestle with the Pauline revelation and it destroys them. They don't benefit from it. Hard to be understood. But by the Holy Ghost, we are understanding them in the house. Are you understanding them? Yeah. And that is why when you speak, ordinary Christians cannot fathom you. Because you're coming from a place that is hard where even the apostles of the Lamb we are struggling to understand. Apostles of the Lamb are 12 of them. And when 12 of them died, it ended. That chapter closed. Today's apostles are not apostles of the Lamb. They are the apostles of his resurrection. They are different. Apostles of the Lamb are apostolic and they are foundation layers of the New Testament. Only 12 of them. 
the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Talking about the twelve. Jesus Christ himself, the cornerstone. They laid the foundation. So what we are doing today, we are just taking what they have laid and using it to teach. We don't add, we don't remove. Are you in the building? That's Christianity. It's apostolic and historic. And it is derived on the foundation of the apostles, 12 of them, and of the Lamb, which is Jesus himself. So what we do is we are learning what they have written. And then some of those apostles acknowledge that Brother Paul's own is in a class. In fact, the person that acknowledges it is the chief of them all. Peter said, ladies and gentlemen, let me warn you. That when you get into Brother Paul's books, you have to calm down. Because there are things there that are hard to be understood. Which people that are unlearned and unstable, they wrestle with it and it destroys them. That's our diet. And that's what we feed on. So that's why Paul kept praying that the eyes of your unders. It takes prayer to understand these things. It takes prayer. It takes prayer. You can't just, you can't just be operating anyhow you want to understand them. No, you must be prayerful. You take time and pray for yourself. You come in an attitude of prayer and meekness. You come in an attitude of what? Prayer. If you are critical, you will soon be lost. You will not understand anything I'm teaching including my audience on television, Facebook, and on campuses. If you're critical, you will not understand what I'm teaching. There is a quality of meekness. You know, with meekness, receive the engrafted. You cannot receive this teaching if you're not meek. Meek means humility. If you come with an attitude of, I know, and then I start teaching and I say, I don't agree. I'm not teaching you for you to agree or not agree. I'm teaching you for you to understand. It's not a matter of I agree. I don't agree. Uh, what, what Dr. Damina is teaching, I don't agree. We are not in a contest. If you don't agree, open your own church and teach the one you agree with. But if you must sit under me to be taught, we are not in an agreeing debate. You are to calm down, let me teach you, and if you're humble, you will see what I see. Hey, no, I agree, I don't agree. How can you say there is no water baptism? I don't agree. Once you take that position, you have disqualified yourself from being my student. You can now go and be your own teacher. And people that are like that, you have to be careful with them. Don't keep them close to you. Did you hear what I said? Don't keep them close to you. Because they will distract you from learning and they will stagnate your growth. They will inflict you with with spiritual coronavirus, they will inflict you. Yes, because such people are infectious like coronavirus. When you stay around them, you must max your face, max your ears. Wear ear mask, not just ear, ear, ear mask and eye mask. Their own is not through nose, it's through eyes and ear. So you wear mask here and wear it in your eyes. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Amen. <laughs> I said amen. And some of those people, if you stay with them, you find out they don't even know anything. Somebody was trying to argue with me. I asked him, how many times have you read the Bible cover to cover? Have you ever read the Bible cover to cover? People like me have read the Bible cover to cover over 50 times. Have you read it once? You argue, clear. Let me talk to people that want to learn. Have you read the Bible cover? I can finish the Bible twice in one year. The entire Bible. You have not read the thing cover to cover. You are, you are, you are arguing with me. To your own destruction. Are we teaching here? Yeah. We're talking about depth. We're not talking about head knowledge. We're not talking about, I agree, I don't agree. The, the way you define that thing is not correct in English. English professor, go to university. That's where English professors go. On the pulpit, it's not English. We're teaching Bible here. We're teaching revelation knowledge. Say the eyes of my understanding. Be enlightened. 
I receive revelation. Can I hear a good amen? amen? Now, are you still in the building? Ephesians chapter 5. If Peter can say those things are hard, you need to pay attention. In Ephesians chapter 5, Brother Paul dealt with something there that has confused many people in the church world. When Brother Paul was talking about husbands, love your wives, wives, submit to your husbands, which has become the popular teaching for marriages in churches, but that was not a teaching on marriage. Ephesians chapter 5 is not a teaching on marriage. Mm -mm. Marriage is used there as a parable. It's not, a it's not exegesis on marriage. Marriage is used there as a parable. And you'll see it in a few minutes. Just stay with me. And some people have used that to teach on, you know, um, uh, a woman is a man with a womb. Womb man. They were naked and not ashamed. It means to be transparent. You are just talking in the bush. Because that's not what we're dealing with in Ephesians chapter 5. Mm -mm. That's not what we're dealing with. When Paul was talking about husband, love your wives, wives submit to your husbands, he was talking about Christ and the church. He was using marriage as a parable to communicate spiritual realities. The intent there was not marriage. The intent there was spiritual realities. Using marriage as an analogy. Look at it. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. Next verse. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. 32. This is a great mystery. This is a great mystery I'm talking about here. But I speak here concerning Christ and the church. I'm not talking husband and wife. I'm talking Christ and the church. Using husband and wife as a physical analogy to bring out the realities that exist between Christ and the church. So the subject is Christ and the church. It's not a marriage seminar. However, there are lessons there to learn for marriage. But that's not the intent. The intent for that writing is Christ and the church. Uh, you know, this was said before man sinned. So, see Adam sin. I speak concerning Christ and the church. So, Christ and the church preceded Adam's sin. Christ and the church preceded Adam's sin. See, never think of Adam's sin as the subject matter. The subject matter is Christ and the church. Adam's sin was just an interruption. Christ and his church predated the sin of Adam. The sin of Adam was an interruption. That's why you hear some people say, if God knew that Adam would sin, why did God create Adam and allow sin? No, you are talking like a man that is not reading his Bible. The church and Christ preceded Adam's sin. The plan of God was the church and Christ. Adam's sin was an interruption of the plan which God in his grace accommodated and cured so that Christ and the church which is the original plan continues in spite of Adam's sin. Are we teaching here? The plan has always been Christ and his church. That's why in Genesis you will see what God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. Okay? What he's talking about is that the unity between Christ and church cannot be, cannot be, cannot be, you know, dissolved. Cannot be separated. And he was speaking emphatically. That is why even the fall of Adam didn't stop Christ and the church. Because what God has joined together, no man can put asunder. So listen, you and Christ can never be separated. That's why the moment you receive Christ, he stays in you forever. It is eternal salvation. 
Because what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. No man puts asunder Christ and his church. We are in an inseparable union with Christ. We are intertwined into each other. We are bone of his bone. He is flesh. You cannot separate one from the other. You can't remove me from Christ. You can't receive, remove Christ from me. In the attempt to remove any from other, you destroy both of us. That's why Paul will say, what shall separate us from the love of God, which is where? In Christ. He's talking about Christ and the church. Inseparable union. Sukatizo. Teaching good this morning? Say with me very loud, I am in Christ. Christ is in me. We can never be separated. Shout it, let the devil hear you very loud, I am in Christ. Christ is in me. We can never be separated. Can I hear that amen on a note of finality? I am in him justified. He is in me glorified. I am born of his bones. He is flesh of my flesh. Ayana, 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 ayana. I can use that scripture to teach eternal salvation. Look at it. He says, no man yet ever hated his own flesh. What Jesus is saying is, I cannot hate you. You are already in me. No matter what you do, I must look for a way to cure it. No man yet ever hated his flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, even as Christ the church. That he may cleanse it. That he may wash it. He is the one doing it. He's the one cleansing. He's the one washing. He's the one cleaning. That he may present you to himself. You won't present yourself. He will present you. And in presenting you, he will present you a glorious church. Without spot, without wrinkle, without any such thing. But that you may be holy and blameless. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. That's eternal salvation right there. Right there, in that teaching brother Paul gave in Ephesians chapter 5, he was dealing with our realities in Christ, which are eternal. He wasn't dealing with marriage. And then you know what? <laughs> this legalist, who says salvation cannot be eternal? The legalist, honey, who says salvation cannot be eternal? The legalist, who say you can lose salvation? The legalist, who say your morality can destroy the work of Christ. The legalist who say you must confess sin every day. The legalist who say Jesus did a bad job. They are the proponents of you cannot divorce your wife. Even if your wife is removing your eye, you must stay there and die. Even if your husband is removing your nose, you cannot leave your marriage. The legalist believe that you, you can keep your marriage forever. But Jesus cannot keep his church forever. Is something not wrong with the Mendula of Langata? How can you believe more in a man's power to live with his wife no matter what, irrespective of what, but you don't believe that Christ can tolerate anything. You believe that once you sin, Christ will sack you. Then it means man has more power to keep his marriage than Christ has power to keep his church. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about here. It makes no sense. They teach marriage cannot be dissolved. But they say you can lose Christ. And Christ can lose you. Their head is sick. They are not thinking straight. Are we in the building? You know, whenever eternal salvation matter is raised, I go all out. Because, because what Christ did is so eternal and perfect. Nothing can be taken away from it. Somebody getting blessed? So in that, in that union, husband and wife, we find Christ and the church. That's why both Adam and Eve were called Adam. All of us are called Christ. Male and female, Christ. Adam and Eve, Adam. Analogy. Distinguished personalities, but the same person. Distinguished personalities, but the same person, the same substance. So is Christ and his church. Ephesians 6.19, stay with me. I have many things to share with you. You will bear all of it. You will bear all of it. Amen. I said you will bear all of it. 
In fact, listen carefully, everybody. I'd like you to adjust your program this week. I want you to come back tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Because I want to finish in Christ's realities on Wednesday. So we can start something again on Sunday. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Adjust your program. I beg of you. Plan, re reschedule your program. We are back to church tomorrow. We are back to church on Tuesday. We are back to church on Wednesday this week. Uh, party, part, okay, party will happen here. Uh, I move the party here. We will do the party inside church. But we will, the word of God first. Siki. 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 Before party. <laughs> But party will happen, but seek it first. So we we'll do the word first. Then after the word, we will dance. Is that, doesn't that feel good? You'll be dancing with word inside your leg. All right, let's get back. Let's get back. Some people don't know what we're talking about. You know, we're speaking in tongues now. We shall interpret later. <laughs> Ephesians 6.19. Ephesians 6.19. I thought you would clap for me for giving you program Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, it's labor now. It's labor. It's because I love you. I want you to know it. Say, I hear you. All right, Ephesians 6, 19. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known what? The mystery of the gospel. So where is the mystery of the gospel? Huh? Old Testament. Gospel is what we are doing. Now. See, gospel is not preaching to people to be born again. What I'm teaching you now is gospel. What you're hearing this morning, is it not good news? That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Years ago, they used to say, what is your message? What is your message? You know, some people, God has called them to teach commerce. Some people, God has called them to teach marriage. Some people, God has called them to teach... Uh, 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 deliverance. Some people, God has called them to teach entrepreneurship. Some people God has called them to teach prosperity. Some people God has called them to preach holiness. What is your message? Christ. Some people God has called them to preach wealth transfer. <laughs> Kai, ignorance is not good. Somebody said to me, you are preaching Christ. Christ is not everything in the Bible. Christ is not, balance it. Balance it. Balance what? What are we balancing? Then somebody said to me, you know even the Bible says, we know in part. So Dr. Damina, you have a part. Another pastor have a part. So all pastors have li li different parts. So that means we should listen to all pastors to collect part, 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 part. So when we put it together, we have a whole. Ignorance will undress you in the public. When Brother Paul said we know in part, he wasn't talking of the teaching ministry of the word. He was talking about the oppression of spiritual gifts. He wasn't talking of the teaching ministry. And even that we know in part, when I finish exegesis on it, you will understand what that in part means. It's not talking of different messages. It's not talking about pastors have different, different things. All pastors are called to preach one thing, Christ. All. All. And anyone that is not sitting on Christ, he's doing extracurricular activity. The message is one, is Christ. There's no message like deliverance. The message is Christ. Anybody who says Christ is not all that is in the Bible, he's been damnable. He's been damnable. Somebody say, what about being useful on it? You don't need the Bible to be useful on it. You just need to come from a very good family. You will be a useful person. You don't need the Bible to be useful on it. Do you need the Bible to be useful on it? No, you don't. Why did you go to school? Eh? Why did you go to read agriculture, philosophy, psychology, medical science, law? Why did you read those things? To be useful on it. There are institutions created by government. 
We are people in the society will go and be equipped on how to be useful to the, to the earth. In church, we teach you things that are spiritual. Finish. Finish. Oh. This is the house for spirituals. This is the house for what? It's a spiritual house. We are not here to teach you anything that will make you a career person. No, we are not in the flesh. We are in the spirit. Are you in the spirit? So what do you learn here? Spirituals. That's what we gather here for. Say, so how can I be going to a church where they don't do singles mingle, where they don't do relationship panadol, vitamin C for relationships? Every time we gather, all Papa is doing is just, he's just explaining Bible, explaining Bible, as if he wants to make all of us Bible students. Are you not a Bible student? Do you know the reason why there are Bible schools? Because churches failed in teaching the Bible. If churches were teaching the Bible the way it should be taught, there would be no need for Bible school. Because the church is the Bible school. Why do we gather to study? In studying Bible, what is that? Bible school. Well, because pastors are not doing their jobs well. That's why people are going to Bible school to go and learn how to. Uh. Some of you here, the things you are learning here, if you catch a pastor, he will carry Bible and paper and start writing notes. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Um, on my Instagram page, somebody left a message there. If you go there, check it. It's there in the public space. He said, I am a graduate in theology. I went to America to read theology. I paid school fees $100,000. After graduating, I stumbled by Dr. Damina's teachings. Then I discovered I wasted my time in America. It is now I am understanding the theology that they were trying to teach me. He wrote it there openly. And he said, I'm learning it now for free. I'm not paying school fees. The one I paid school fees for, I learned nothing. I didn't even understand what they were speaking. It's now I'm learning. Because they went to hear history. History. Jesus passed by Capernaum. You know Capernaum? Capernaum is 35 kilometers from Nazareth. If you move by the stretch, you will see cassava by the road and palm oil by the road. It's called Capernaum. It has no nutritional value. When demons face you, you won't say Capernaum 25 kilometers. <laughs> glory to God. I say glory to God. Are you still in the building? Let me round up this service. Let me round up before you tempt me. Colossians 126. Colossians 126. Please pay attention. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations. But now is made manifest to his saints, 27, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Next verse, whom we preach. Who do we preach? Christ. That's the message. Whom we preach. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect where? In Christ. We preach Christ so that you can be perfect where? In Christ. Whom we preach. By the time we dig the revelation of Christ further, we will see Christ and we will see you. The height of the revelation of Christ is Christ and you. If you have seen only Christ, you have not seen deep. When you get deeper, the revelation of Christ is always Christ and the believer. It's not Christ alone. It's Christ and the believer. In Colossians 2, 2, put it up. Colossians 2, 2. That their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Colossians 4 3. 4 3. Without praying also for us that God will open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. 
So the mystery of God is the mystery of Christ. If you're writing, that's a good one. The mystery of God is the mystery of Christ. And the mystery of Christ is Christ in you. The mystery of God is the mystery of Christ. And the mystery of Christ is Christ in you. The mystery of God is the mystery of Christ. And the mystery of Christ is Christ in you. Did you notice that the revelation of God on the earth is restricted to man? The revelation of God on the earth is restricted to man. Goats don't have revelation. Cows don't have revelation. God's revelation is restricted to man. Did you notice that? Yeah. The revelation of God on the earth is restricted to man. He that has seen Jesus has seen the Father. He that has seen Jesus has seen the Father. Then he went further. The father makes his home where? The father makes his home where? In us. I and my father will come into you and make our abode where? In you. The father's abode is man. The father's revelation is restricted to man. Man. So, we reveal God. We. We reveal God. That's the revelation of God. We reveal God. If you observe all the things we've been reading from the beginning of this service, God has never been taught by Paul as a God at a distance. Paul never taught a God at a distance. He taught God in dwelling us. He taught God in dwelling us. Not a God at a distance. He taught God in dwelling man. Man is God's dwelling place. Man is the abode for God. Man is God's house. The believer houses God. The believer is God's house. So all of God's revelation is in a man. And man is God's residence. Man is God's dwelling. The tabernacle of God is with men. He dwells in man. Say with me, I house God. Can I hear you shouting very loud? Say it and think about the implications of it. Say with me, I house God. Stand on your feet. It's going to be exciting because we have entered Brother Paul proper. And that's why I don't want distance. I want us to be in church every day so that we can stay with Brother Paul. They are hard to be understood. So there is need for back-to-back -back classes. There's need for what? Back-to-back -back classes. So that we can unpack it. So that we can understand it. So that the whole thing will come together as, as, you know, as, as an entity in our understanding. Brother Paul. Brother Paul. Hard to be understood, not impossible. So our prayer is that the eyes of everyone in this service and around the world be enlightened in the name of Jesus. Say with me, I house God. Say it very loud. Can I hear you louder? You know what brother Paul said? That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Every one of you here is a carrier of all the fullness of God. Everything that makes God, God lives on your inside. Say with me, I am filled with all the fullness of God. It pleased God that all of the fullness of God should dwell in Christ bodily and you are complete in him. So in the depth of revelation knowledge, it will always be Christ and you. Christ and you. Not just Christ alone. Christ and the believer. It's always that is the height of it. It is called identification. Christ and the believer. All that is in him is in me. I house God. Amen. Oh, I said amen.
Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, thank you for the privilege of learning this morning. Thank you for the privilege of being equipped. Thank you for the thoughts that have been communicated to our understanding by the teaching of your word. I command veils to fall off the eyes of anyone hearing these words this morning. Clarity comes by the Holy Ghost. Veils fall off in the name of Jesus. Revelation knowledge grows big on your inside. In the name of Jesus. And I decree that you grow and grow in knowledge. You grow in grace. You abound in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Barriers are terminated. Barriers are terminated. Barriers are terminated. And I decree that you walk in the authority that is yours in Christ Jesus. That you function in the authority that is yours in Christ Jesus. That you function in the realities that are yours in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are sufficient in all things. You lack nothing. In the name of Jesus. Look at me everybody. The Holy Ghost just spoke this to me. He said make them know that they don't need anything outside. Everything they need is inside them. You are self-contained. Stop looking for things from outside. Look, look for things inside. All the resources you need are inside you. Everything you will need in this life is inside you. God is not going to do one more thing. He has done everything. The believer is a complete package. Complete package. You lack all that you will ever need is inside you right now. So anytime you need it, you pull it out. Every time you need it, you pull it out. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. Metal adabagaga. Out of your belly. Wisdom out of your belly. Direction out of your belly. Solution out of your belly. Insight out of your belly. Answers to questions out of your belly. How to dissolve situations on earth out. All that you need is inside you. So you pull it out. Metal adababa. Metal adababa. Metal adababa. It shall be in him a well springing up to everlasting life. Somebody say, I lack nothing. Shout it very loud. I lack nothing. I am sufficient. I have everything that I need on my inside. Right now. Right now. Right now. I'm not a needy. I'm supplied for. I'm full of supplies. All the resources on my inside. I didn't hear a good amen. And therefore I decree that this week. Walk in the reality of these resources. Where you need a miracle. Receive one. Where you need a miracle, receive one. Where you need a miracle, receive one. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise for victory today. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Go ahead and celebrate what you have in Christ. Is that the way you celebrate? Glory! 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 Amen. Woo! Get a good offering. Let's worship and honor Christ this morning. You're watching online. Grab your offering. You're watching in our campuses. Grab your offering. You're watching on television. The banking details are on the screen. Let's all give responsibly. Let's give with understanding. Let's give in honor of what Christ has done. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray this morning... That everybody giving, we give from hearts that are steered up. We give from generous hearts. We give from willing hearts. We give with an understanding. That our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And we thank you for the privilege of using our resources to advance your purpose on the earth. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Praise God. Hey guys, we want to sign you off. You don't want to miss what I'll teach at 11 o'clock. You know, this morning, I'm going to be teaching a continuation of the Pauline Revelation. But tomorrow, we're back again. 6 p.m. GMT plus one. I'll be teaching Tuesday, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. And Wednesday, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. You don't want to miss any of the services this week as we unpack the Pauline Revelation of identification. All of these are intended to enrich you to live the life that you were designed to live on the earth. Amen. Our campuses will live in the able hands of our coordinators. And everybody else, help us invite people to be part of the next service. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. You have your offerings.
We'll march forward and drop them. Hit the song. Let's go. This is Kingdom Life.